road she traveled. And her women who made a difference. A Kula Kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview with Mary Rohr, conducted on April 27th by Dalton M. My name is Mary Rohr, R-O-H-R-E-R. I'm Mary Rohr. I'm the executive director of the Girl Scouts. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself first, and that will help you understand who, whom I am going to be telling a story about as a woman in La Crosse. Okay, let's go. I have been born and raised in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and I've never left La Crosse in my entire life. I have stayed here the whole time. I'm what you would call a first-generation American. And what that means is I am the first person in my family history to be born in America. My mother was born in Czechoslovakia, and my father was born in Germany. And they came over as young children, and they grew up. One was on the south side, my mother around 6th and Jackson Streets, and my father was on the north side by uh, Copeland Avenue by the Milwaukee Road Railroad tracks. He married my, his wife, my grandmother, her, whose name is Mary Buchner, B-U-C-H-N-E-R, and they had seven children, one of whom was my father. And I'm named after my grandmother, Mary, and that's why my name is Mary, and my maiden name was Buchner. My grandfather and grandmother started the Buchner's Tavern on the north side of La Crosse on Copen Avenue, which is now called Sloopy's. She built Sloopy's Tavern, and then she built the great, big, huge two-story red house right next door. So if you ever go down Copen Avenue, you can say, when I was at Longfellow Middle School, this woman came and talked with me, and she told me about this tavern and the Big Red House, and that's where my father grew up, and my grandmother built the tavern herself, brought in German bands with the help of her husband, my grandfather, and they entertained all the people on Copeland Avenue, and they built all the little houses up and down Copeland Avenue. So my heritage in La Crosse is very strong because I've never left here, and my father and my mother got married, and they had three children, of which I'm the youngest and the only girl, two older brothers, and my father didn't want to be in the tavern business, so guess what he did? He became the first plumbing company in the city of La Crosse called Buchner Plumbing. Now, you might have heard of Buchner Plumbing, and his sister married a gentleman named Joe Hangel, and that became Hangel Plumbing. So I come from a history of plumbers in the whole city of La Crosse. Almost every plumber is related to me that has a plumbing company. And yes, I know how to fix a toilet that's stopped up. And I know how to fix a garbage disposal that's plugged up. And I know how to change a washer in a faucet when the faucet gets all clogged up with calcium deposits. And that's about the extent of my plumbing experience. So. From that, I grew up on the north side of La Crosse, and I went to Aquinas High School, and then I went to University of Wisconsin, La Crosse, and graduated with a college degree, and my very first job, and I got married and had three children, and my very, at a very young age, age 20, I had my first child, who is now 40. So you do the math, and you all three can figure out just how old am I. And you can tell me at the end of this interview, we know how old you are, Mary. You're an old lady, and your age is, so you figure it out. My daughter is 40, and I, she was born, and I gave birth to her when I was 20. So you see if you can figure that out. Now, let's go on, and you can tell me that answer when we're finished. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to how I met the person I'm going to share with you, and her name is Nancy Gerard. So, I got my first job at Viterbo University, and I was the director of housing and food service for all of the students living in the dorms. And Nancy Gerard came into Viterbo one day, and she was organizing in the food service program a banquet for Girl Scout leaders. And that's how she and I met. And she said, Mary, 
we don't want you to work at Viterbo. We want you to come and join the Girl Scouts. And I said, the Girl Scouts, I don't like to go camping. And I don't, don't know anything about selling Girl Scout cookies. So she kept on me and on me and on me. And three years later, I quit my job at Viterbo. And I joined the Girl Scouts. And I was 32 years old. And that's how I met Nancy Girard. She was on the board of directors as a volunteer with the Girl Scouts, and from there I got to know her very intimately. Well, how would I describe Nancy Girard? The Grand Dom of the City of La Crosse. Now, you have other questions, I'm assuming, and so we can move from there now that I've given you what I call my segue into Let's Talking About Nancy Girard. Okay, um, when you first met Nancy, what was your impression? Let me put it this way. She blew me away. She can't, when Nancy comes into a room, she is all energy, all excitement, all happiness, very enthusiastic, and she has a great sense of humor, and she's a wonderful storyteller. And that's what I thought of when I saw her come in the room, and that's how come I couldn't resist taking the job she kept recruiting me for with the Girl Scouts. She's hard to refuse. Um, you said she was a storyteller, like, um, like what type of stories did she tell? Well, Nancy was what I would call a natural-born teacher. When she first graduated from college, and she never left the city of La Crosse either, she became a kindergarten teacher, and that's how she learned to become the greatest storyteller. And she could tell stories right off the top of her head and invent them and create them as she was going along. And so you would become mesmerized. Do you know what I mean by mesmerized? She, you would just become so intrigued with her story because she would hold your attention. And that's why I call her a natural born teacher. You know, all of us get some teachers that kind of like boring or square or they don't quite get it, not Nancy. She was always with it to the day she died. She always always intrigued and captured your attention. Nobody wanted to leave her class. Everybody was sad when they would leave her class because they loved her so much. You grew to love her throughout your school year when you were a kindergartner, and little kindergartners would cry when they would leave her class to go to first grade because they, didn't, they, didn't, they missed her and didn't want to leave her. One very interesting aspect of her storytelling that I'll close my response with is that she became very good at mimicking other people. Like she would be able to imitate President Bush, or she could imitate the mayor of La Crosse. And if she would tell a story about somebody, she wouldn't just tell the story, she would like become that person, just like she's being an actress, and she would live that character in relating her story to you, no matter who that person was, whether it was Abraham Lincoln, or whether it was the mayor of La Crosse, or another individual that she met in La Crosse, and she would imitate and talk about them as if she were them. And that's a very interesting aspect of somebody being a storyteller. So how has Nancy impacted La Crosse? Well, I'm gonna tell all three of you how she has impacted you indirectly. Nancy decided to run for the school board of La Crosse, and she won. And so she became a member of the school board, and she told me and shared the reasons that she wanted to be on the school board was she cared about you, you, and you. She, she, she cared so much about kids. She was so dedicated to education when she had become a kindergarten teacher that she wanted to do something more because she left being a kindergartner teacher because she had six children. She had three girls and three boys and she decided she couldn't raise her own children and hold down the teaching job all at the same time. So she thought the best combination was she would join the school board so that she could indirectly impact the quality of the education that students just like you get. And today there are policies that are on the school board that she and other school board members of her time 
had implemented in, to impact the quality of education today. She was one of the first people to talk about we need specialized schools. And you all know now, to, now of course, that like Roosevelt School on the north side is a specialized school for arts and technology. She was the first person to think about we need to be doing something like Montessori. She was very much in favor of Montessori. Are you familiar with Montessori in the La Crosse School District? It's part of your school system. It's a hands-on learning environment. For example, say you weren't really good at reading and reading was really difficult for you, or you really weren't very good at math because you just couldn't figure out how old Mary Rohr is unless you could figure out it on paper, or you had to learn by doing it somehow rather than your head. That's Montessori. So students in Montessori would learn by actually working with their hands and doing things with their hands to help them learn about math and science. And that's what Nancy was one of the individuals that created the Montessori program. She created the original groundwork for starting the Montessori program in La Crosse. Uh, how about the Girl Scouts? Like, what did she help them do? Did she well, remember, do I shared with you Nancy's passion was kids. Whether she was serving on the school district board or whether she was a kindergarten teacher. So she took those same skills and decided she was going to volunteer and she was going to become a Girl Scout leader because she thought that Girl Scouts for Girls was an important thing to help partner with what you learn in school. So that while you're in school, you've got to remember when Nancy was a Girl Scout leader, that was in the 1950s. And when she was a Girl Scout leader, were there sports for girls in schools, do you think, like there are now? No. There were no sports for girls. And there was, boys really had a distinct advantage because you all would get to do softball team, basketball team. You got to do all those kind of things. They didn't have soccer then, but you had tennis, and you could do track. Girls could do nothing at all. So she felt that by having those programs in the Girl Scouts, girls would have an opportunity to do those same things that boys got to do in school. So she helped organize and found the Girl Scout programs and helped develop sports programs for the Girl Scout summer camp programs at Campy Howie. And that's how she helped girls increase their self-esteem and have self-confidence. And she helped girls through Girl Scouting have scholarships to go to summer camp. She created the first campership program for girls at Campy Howie so that they, all girls, could have an affordable way to go to summer camp. Would you say that kids were her motivation? Yes. I think that she has impacted lots of girls, not so much like you all as boys as she has with girls, because she had three girls and she had three boys. There was nothing better than girls in her mind because she felt girls were always at a disadvantage back then, and they truly were. Um, I'm sure if you've been doing any kind of reading about women's history, it took a long time before women could even have an, the right to vote. Women didn't get paid the same wages as you would. So she was very, and she was part of that whole era. She, when she was in school as learning how to be a teacher in college, she went to Chicago and she met a woman named Jane Adams. Do you know who Jane Adams is in Chicago? And it's spelled A-D-D-A-M-S. She was an individual who helped girls in the inner city who were in great poverty and girls who were homeless have a place to be and go to school. And Nancy was one of the teachers at her school called the Hull House in downtown Chicago. And Nancy was a good friend of Jane Addams's, um, people that were part of her legacy, and the people that kept that program going. And Nancy herself became part of that program before she moved back to La Crosse following her college and became a kindergarten teacher at Emerson Grade School in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, so how had joining the Girl Scouts impacted your life? Very good question. 
I never dreamed in my wildest dreams that I would be a Girl Scout director because I majored in chemistry in college and English. What's that got to do with Girl Scouting and volunteers and raising money? I had no idea that's what I was going to end up doing, and it's all because of Nancy Girard meeting me at Viterbo University and convincing me that the best thing I could do in this community was to help girls through Girl Scouting. So I decided I would try the job. And you know how you try something new on, whether it's clothes or a new pair of shoes? It, all, it feels kind of uncomfortable at first. You're not sure you feel good in it, and it doesn't seem to feel quite right. That's how, about, how I felt about Girl Scouting initially, was, oh, I don't know if I like this job or not. But it grew on me, and it became my passion, and I'm now in my 28th year in Girl Scouting, and I have felt very good about all the things I've done in impacting two generations of girls. So when I became 32 years old, I joined the Girl Scouts. Another tip on how old do you think I am? And I have been in the Girl Scouts for 28 and one half years. It'll be 29 years this coming August. And in doing so, I have had three campaigns to raise money to put in a brand new swimming pool at the Girl Scout camp, to add a new dining lodge and program center at the camp to put in flush toilets because girls decided we don't want to use latrines anymore nor do we want to clean them so we have flush toilets and running water with sinks at the Girl Scout camp and my latest adventure which just is starting this summer is I'm putting in log cabins and yurts at the Girl Scout camp so Girl Scout camp is an exciting place to be it's an exciting part of my job to raise money so that the Girl Scouts are able to exist in this area. And what's most important of all is that the programs that we offer to girls through Girl Scouting helps girls learn about themselves, to learn about their own self-esteem, to grow confidently in everything that they do, and to feel equal to you guys as boys. Do you think girls today feel equal? Oh, yes, don't they? Do you sometimes feel they think they're more than equal? <laughs> so we've come a long way since Nancy Gerard first started with the Girl Scouts. Girls are much different today than they were then. Girls um, engage in extreme sports just as much as boys do. And that's all due to people like Nancy Gerard. And hopefully someday people will remember me as the person that helped make Campy Howie grow for girls in Girl Scouting and helped raise the money to make Girl Scouts happen in La Crosse. Because if you have no money, we have no purpose because we have no mission that we can carry out due to lack of funds. So my job is chief fundraiser for the Girl Scouts. And when you buy a box of cookies, guess what? When you buy a box of Girl Scout cookies, it helps a little girl go to camp and it helps build camp to be what it is today. Camp is the camp that cookies built. And every time you get a box of Girl Scout cookies, you're never gonna forget ever again. Oh, that Mary Roar, she's the one that told us about Nancy Gerard, Campy Howie, and Girl Scout cookies. Nancy Gerard, when she was a teacher, what school did she, she, she teach at? She was a teacher at Emerson Elementary School. Do you know where Emerson School is? And she was one of the first kindergarten teachers there. When Nancy Gerard was on the school board, what other things did she help make or create? Well, like the school board moved to the Hogan Administrative Center on East Avenue while she was on the school board to make room for better schools. She was part of the school board that welcomed the Southeast Asian Hmong children to our community. Do you, know, do you have any friends who are Southeast Asian Hmong? Do you? Yeah. She was the, one of the first school board members to make sure that the Hmong children, when they first came to America from Laos, to make sure that they were welcomed and integrated into the school system. And do you remember, any of you, do you think about 
what it was like prior to the Hmong being in La Crosse, we hardly had any people of other color than white. Do you remember that? At all? Well, we were just learning about that in class. Very interesting. Because La Crosse was a very white community. So it was a two-way street here. And Nancy was very sensitized to the fact that all children have an equal opportunity for education in La Crosse. But most of the Hmong lived when they first came to America and settled in La Crosse. Do you know what neighborhood? Mm, about 6th and Jackson Streets. Almost all of that became a Southeast Asian neighborhood. And guess then where all the children would go to school? Hamilton. So all of a sudden, Hamilton went from being all white children to almost all Asian children. And Nancy's thought about that, and she said, it's not fair for a school to be all one color. We need to mix and match all the children up so that you learn from an Asian child, and an Asian child learns from you, and you learn from a black child, and a black child learns from you, and you learn from an Indian child, and an Indian child learns from you. So La Crosse got into some very difficult times because people were saying, I don't want my child assigned to a school six miles away when I live three blocks from the neighborhood school. But that was the only way they could integrate the school system. So the school board became very divided, but Nancy Gerard always was what I would call courageous and brave because she always stood up no matter what people thought about their prejudices or whether they discriminated against one color versus another, she stood up for the children no matter what their color. And that's probably her legacy in La Crosse is that she made sure all children had the same rights to the same education and that all schools were integrated so children not only learned from their teachers, you all got to learn even better from each other because you all brought different cultures together. When was the last time you would have had an opportunity to talk to a person who had to flee their homeland and move to a community that was so different from their community. It would be like you going, you having to leave La Crosse and you had to flee it because the leaders were going to persecute you and that the whole city was taken hostage and you had to either leave or you would be executed or persecuted or discriminated against or kicked out of your community. So you left and you didn't know where to go. So your parents said, we're going to go to Laos. And you would have said, Laos? Where's that? And that's what the little Hmong children said is, America? Where's that? And so if you had to do that, you would have been in their shoes and you would have thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to Laos and I'm going to be the only white person there. And the school system doesn't even speak the same language I speak. And I don't know any of the children.